24 hours after the Richmond police chief resigns, we're asking the mayor about his departure and what really led to his resignation. Did you ask for it, yes or no? I was not in the meeting, so I did not ask for any resignation. Plus, how the community is reacting to his leaving. And we spoke to a former Richmond police chief who gave us his take on the process in searching for a new person to take command. Then, two Chesterfield police officers injured in a shooting. What we're learning about the suspect's criminal history. The CBS 6 News at 6 starts right now. And we start with some breaking news out of Chesterfield. That's where we're learning more from police about a shooting that injured a man and two officers. We're live to tell you what investigators say happened inside a home that led to the incident there. But first, complete coverage of the resignation of Richmond's police chief. Good evening, I'm Bill Fitzgerald. I'm Candace Burns. It's been 24 hours since Gerald Smith stepped down and there's still lots of questions about why he chose to leave. Our Jake Burns talks to Richmonders about the change in leadership and Melissa Hippolyte takes an in-depth look at what the process of hiring a new chief could look like. Well, we begin with our Tyler Lane who spoke to the mayor today to ask how much he was involved in Smith's departure. Tyler? Well, Bill and Candace, Richmond Mayor LeVar Stoney tells me that he was not involved whatsoever with the resignation of former Chief Gerald Smith. In fact, he told me he is never involved when it comes to the firing and hiring of police chiefs in this city. Now, this goes against what the mayor has said in the past, as he has previously taken credit for the appointments and a resignation of other former chiefs since he's been in office. I'm not going to get into back and forth on, you know, playing Monday morning quarterback on that decision. Less than 24 hours after former police chief Gerald Smith steps down as leader of the Richmond Police Department, Mayor LeVar Stoney declines to explain why. So you can't comment on like why this happened, why he gave his resignation? All, all I can say, I respect his decision, Tyler. Though Smith resigned amid controversy surrounding reported low morale in the department, rising officer vacancies, the scrutinized alleged July 4th mass shooting plot, and the police union calling for a leadership change, the mayor did not acknowledge those concerns. Instead, he recognized that when Smith came on board in 2020 during civil unrest, he faced an uphill battle. It's not easy being a police officer. Hell, it's not easy being a police chief right now in America. And so for those who step up and take on the job, I'm grateful for his, for his help. During a Wednesday news conference, Stoney initially declined to answer whether Smith willingly submitted his resignation or if the mayor asked for it until we pressed him about it. All I can tell you, because this is a personnel matter right here, is that the chief tendered his resignation with the chief administrative officer yesterday. I respect the chief's decision. Did you ask for it, yes or no? I was not in the meeting, so I did not ask for any resignation. Uh, these are decisions that were made by the chief. You did not Thanks, ask guys. for it. No I, no, I was not in the meeting. As I stated earlier, let me, let me, let me, be, let me be very clear. Let me be very clear. Hold on, hold on, hold on real quick. I was not in the meeting. That meeting, Stoney says he didn't attend, it took place at City Hall Tuesday afternoon between Smith and Chief Administrative Officer Lincoln Saunders, who works directly under the mayor, and that's the meeting where Chief submitted his resignation. But as the mayor, you didn't want to be in that meeting? That seems like a very significant meeting. Uh, I'm, I don't get involved in the hiring and firing of police chiefs. However, press releases sent from the mayor's office in 2020 give credit to Mayor Stoney for appointing Police Chief William Smith, requesting Police Chief William Smith's resignation, appointing interim Police Chief William Jody Blackwell, and appointing Police Chief Gerald Smith. We're going to move on uh, in, a, in a new direction. And I also reached out to a city spokesperson to ask if Chief Administrative Officer Lincoln Saunders requested Smith's resignation. She did not directly answer the question, only telling me that the chief submitted his resignation to the CAO and the CAO accepted it. Now, we do know that a big part of a police chief's job is to connect with the community, and we wanted to find out today how Richmonders are feeling about the resignation and the search to find the city's new top cop. My colleague Jake Burns is live with that part of our coverage. Hey, Jake. 
Hey, Tyler, that really did come up today when we were speaking with folks here in Richmond. Of course, this is a city of more than 200,000 people, so there's no shortages of opinions uh, on policing and leadership. Here's a few that we heard. At this Jackson Ward bus stop, plenty of people were well aware of the resignation by the city's chief of police. I just felt sorry for him when I saw his heart so buggy. He said, when they came to him to interview, he said, Nothing happened, nothing happened in there. I like, yeah, he hot broken. Gary Taylor has lived in Richmond all his life. He thought Chief Smith's tenure was too short. He needed to get some more officers. At the same time, he says Richmond needs to get a handle on continued violence. I'm scared. I'm scared of catching the bus in the morning at 6 o'clock. Too much danger. Every day somebody getting killed. Acting Chief Richard Edwards is the fifth person to hold the role in as many years. The seasons have changed on display in Carytown. Yeah, no, I didn't know. Zoe Python hadn't heard the news, but did follow the Dogwood Dell July 4th incident. Smith said RPD thwarted a mass shooting plot, but prosecutors have yet to present any evidence of one. Mass shootings are such a big problem. It's just like, it kind of like, takes away from the seriousness of it. Python had friends who were pepper sprayed by RPD during social justice protests. Whoever assumes the role, she hopes strongly considers the issues raised by thousands of protesters then. There is one way to look at it that's like, oh, there's crime here, so we need like police to protect and serve. Or there's ways to look at it that like we need more social services to like negate the need for these crimes. Because a lot of crimes are just crimes of like need. He's gonna be the scapegoat. Will Hall wasn't surprised by Smith's resignation, especially seeing all the violence involving young people. On the other hand, he doesn't see the city's top cop as the main solution to that problem. You can get the police chief, the NWCP, you can talk in church all you want, but if, if it don't start in the house, it's not gonna it's not gonna be a change. It's not gonna be a change. Now as for the search for the next police chief, Paul says he thinks that person really needs to show they're gonna have community engagement and make it continual and make it direct. The last person he saw do it, he says, was Chief Rodney Monroe here in Richmond. Working for you at City Hall, Jake Burns, CBS 6 News. Thank you, Jake. Some Richmond residents say they should have a voice in choosing the next police chief. Melissa Hippolyte joins us in studio tonight to explain in depth how Gerald Smith was hired and what a former top cop believes the mayor must do this time around. Melissa? Well, Candace and Bill, I talked to a former police chief from the region who asked to remain anonymous but shared some advice on what they thought Richmond should be doing going forward as they look to hire a new chief. They said Mayor LeVar Stoney should stay true to his word that a full national search should be conducted. Now, if you'll remember, before Gerald Smith was hired, the mayor had promised a national search for a new chief, but he ended up announcing Smith's hire within just 11 days. Here's what he said at the time. Yes, uh, Chief, former Chief <coughs> Rodney Monroe has been helping me over the course of the last 11 days uh, in, in finding a, a new chief for the city of Richmond. Uh, obviously, I leaned on him and then leaned on uh, past chiefs as well. Chief Durham, a good friend of mine, uh, has been involved as well in helping find a search. I talked to a number of candidates. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chief Gerald Smith rose to the top. I think he's the sort of leadership we need in this time here in the city of Richmond. Well, this time, the former chief I spoke with said once a few top candidates have been selected, the mayor should bring those people to the community and ask for the public's input on who should be the top cop in the city. They argued there should be an open dialogue and engagement and the community should be allowed to ask questions to find out what they bring to the table. He suggested asking questions that focus on the city's major issues, youth violence, gun violence, recruiting, retention and morale. For example, what is their vision for addressing these problems? and what crime-fighting strategies have they used in the past. After all, this will be the mayor's fifth police chief under his tenure, and this former chief said the mayor will need to focus on regaining the trust of the officers and the community by giving the community an opportunity to help select the city's next chief. This former chief said that will help get the community's buy-in. Now, to that point, City Councilwoman Catherine Jordan said in her news newsletter to constituents that she looks forward to hiring a chief who can rebuild trust internally and externally and unite both the department and the community. She said she expects she expects an expansive search for that candidate. For the Problem Solvers, I'm Melissa Hippolyte for CBS 6.